Alrighty then, welcome back everybody to the awesome channel where I teach you all how to do everything in KSP, and I mean everything. Alright, now as you can see we're not doing the whole lathe space station thing, blah 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 blah. Well, I figured that's getting kind of boring, it's simple, I'm going to put a space station there just like I did around Kerbin. Use the plane to land and detach things that stay on the surface like science modules for the future once version point two two comes out blah 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 Ooh, Reese's um and now this I'm not sponsored by Reese's these things are just delicious what I am however gonna teach you guys is uh, ISP and thrust weight ratio in much more detail so we need to come up with our basic unit of measuring efficiency so our basic unit of efficiency, we'll call it the Mark One lander can with a medium tank. Medium tank, Mark One, yay. Um, we're going to be ending flight before we touch down and land to save you all time. And um, um, this thing's actually really delicious. Okay, so let's make sure we have everything we need on this. Inland reaction wheel, that way we can control it in flight. And, um, maybe a battery just for extra weight. And let's also put on a nose cone to make it look pretty. Ta da! That is our testing vehicle. And that is what we're going to launch for every time so we can look at thrust to weight ratio and ISP. Okay, so the weight of this here's a really easy way to get your weight, by the way, without using mods. And this is Reese's is awesome. Um, um, uh, still waiting on these loading screens, it's always fun. So, what you do is you go to the orbit map and you hit the I. And our total mass is 3.23 tons. Pretty good. Alright. Now remember, every 10 thrust can lift 1 ton. 10 thrust, 1 ton. And if we can remember that, we'll be on our way. So we needed at least. 30 thrust to lift this thing. And to test that, and remember this adds 0 0.09 thrust. And it's 20. So two of these should do it because we'll get closer to 4 tons total. So two of them, and that should launch us. We should go up with this. That's 40 thrust. We're at about. Th Actually, I'll show you our weight. Let me come out here. Because I'm awesome and I'm gonna use actual numbers on this episode because you all like actual numbers. 3.41 tons. Alright, so with some throttle management, we should be able to get the actual perfect weight. Now we start to throttle up here. Three fourths, no, and right about there just enough thrust to get us moving. We're, we have a little bit of headway. And we go. Full throttle. Now as the fuel goes down we get lighter. You can see that here in the information three. Right there. Three tons right there. We're gonna drop down to 2.9 and it just keeps going down and down and down. You can see our altitude there, our velocity. That's actually kind of convenient having those things right there. Allows you to fly more out here than down there. Okay, so now that we got thrust to weight ratio, I'm going to show you what happens if your thrust is less than what we need. Oh man, I'm out of Reese's. Oh well. So, we need at least 30 thrust. Well, this guy only gives us 20. Oh no, 20! Eh, yeah, well. And since it's on the bottom of the tank, I'll use those so it doesn't squish, squish the engine. OK. 
Okay. And I'm also going to bring it all the way down as low as it goes. Just like that. Okay, launch. And this is what happens if you don't have enough thrust. This has nothing to do with fuel efficiency yet. This is all how much do we need to get up off the launch pad. Okay. So we throttle up to the max, turn on our SAS, and hit go. As you can see, it doesn't. We are at full throttle, as you can see here. We are burning fuel, and it's just not going anywhere. In fact, it's not going to go anywhere until our weight is at least two tons. So if I say here, and wait, we can speed it up a little bit without too much issue. Never mind. Well, you guys get the idea. When we get up to, when we drop down to two tons, it would have lifted us off. Or started to move us up. So we go back to the vehicle assembly building. Okay. Lift this back up so we can work underneath it. Pull that off. Let's see what other options we have. We have this, it gives us 50. That's a bit too much. Uh, this guy gives us 1.5. That's nowhere near enough. Each one of these gives us 1.5. So we could actually work that out. So each group of these is 6. So there's 6 thrust, 12 thrust, 18 thrust. 24 thrust. If I go one more, that will be exactly 30. 30 thrust. Now, when I launch this, this should be enough to get us going upwards once our weight goes below 3 tons. Which will happen in 20 to 50 billion years, but and actually I think we're a little too high up to do this so what we're gonna do is move these actually we'll move the engines it's a lot of engines we're just separating the staging so the low so we can burn off fuel before it decouples and lets us fall okay turn those on throttle up now if we come up here, pull up our information, we're not going to be able to move until exactly 3. So, I'm going to time warp a little bit here, just to get us down to 3.1, 3.2, somewhere in there. That way we can work out on our own exactly when the best time is to decouple. Okay. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. And it's just barely light enough for all those engines to do that. But that's because we were only working with exactly 30 thrusts, so we could only lift exactly three tons. But now that we're getting lighter, we're getting acceleration, all that sort of thing. Yay, rockets, they're fun. Yay! Okay, so I think that covers thrust really well. Um, I will say this. Oops. Not the tracking station. Guys, look at all the things we have out there. That is a lot. <coughs> Ooh. Whee. Ha. Okay. So now I'm going to show you the advantages of using way more than enough thrust. Come on. Come back in here. Should be untitled or quick save ship. Or just loads of force. That's cool. Okay. So let's get rid of these. And I'm going to show you the advantages of using more thrust than what is needed. You know, a lot of people go, well, why would you ever use more thrust than what's needed? Well, if you want to do extremely quick maneuvers. So, 
if we look at the skipper, that's 650. That's enough to lift 65 tons by itself. This thing only weighs 3 point something plus another 4 tons. That adds 4 tons, by the way. So we're lifting about 7 tons with the thing. And this is where I'm going to segue stealthily, without you guys ever knowing I'm segueing, right into fuel efficiency. If you remember from the other thrusters and everything like that, um, we had enough fuel where it burned for a while, and I mean a long while. Right? I was able to fully throttle up and get it going, and it floated up there for a good while, and we never really used all of our fuel. Now watch how quickly our fuel goes with a lot of thrust. This is great. A lot of thrust will get going pretty fast, but our fuel, as you can see, goes pretty much right down to nothing. And we are already out of fuel. Just like that. And that's where we make our segue straight into ISP. And with the skipper on our launching payload, we get up to 4,492. So let's all remember 4,492. And like, well, maybe we can improve that by adding more thrust. Sure, let's give that a try. The only thing with more thrust is the mainsail. Big honking beast. It's six tons instead of four tons. We're adding another two tons, but we get 1,500 max power. You're thinking, well, psh, that's easily going to get past that, and it might. The physics in this game don't exactly work out correctly. I will say that. The physics work, but sometimes on these small scale tests like this, you get a bug or whatever, or a mathematical loop around that makes this better than the skipper as far as fuel goes. So we launch, and we're out of fuel. More thrust, you saw us, we blasted up there, we broke the sound barrier with no problems whatsoever, but. Due to our lower ISP, or fuel efficiency, as many call it, we only got to 2,809. So the skipper's better so far. Has enough thrust to get us up there, yet it uh, has less thrust than the, the mainsail, but it has a higher ISP. And I'll show you that in the vehicle assembly building. So now you come over here to propulsion. Look at the skipper. Uh, it's the fourth line down and the little stats there, or third line at, on there. ISP at sea level, 300. Okay, so we look at the mainsail, ISP at sea level, 280. So we can kind of, uh, words, we can put two and two together and figure out that, well, 300 got us almost to 5,000, and 280 only got us up to about 3,000. So, let's play around with our ISP. Now, keep in mind, we need enough thrust to overcome the weight of this, but we also want extra ISP. So, we look at the next two options, which are these two, the LT LVT-30 and the LVT-45. And you look, 215 and 200 for max power. Great. Now, this one has ISP at sea level of 320, and this one also has 320. There's really no difference. So, at that point, it's 100% thrust, but you also have to look at the total mass at the bottom. Mass reduces um, efficiency. It's obvious. It's heavier. It's going to use more to get where you want it to go. So, this is a mass of 1.5. And this is a mass of 1.25. Now, this one has more thrust, but it doesn't gimbal. This one gimbals, which gives us thrust factoring and all that. Now, in this test, we're not really gimbling, so of course our better option is going to be with the one with the same ISP, more thrust, but lower mass. So, we'll test and see what the worst one will get us. We'll do that first. 
the quote-unquote worst one. We're not looking for maneuverability right now. We're looking for um, fuel efficiency for just going straight up. And with the ISP higher than the main sail and everything like that by 20, we should be using less fuel by a good marginal about amount. ISP is not a linear scale, it's more exponential than anything. So we go straight up, make sure I have SAS turned on so we don't fudge the numbers. And as you can see, we're not going as fast, but we're using fuel a lot more efficiently. I know, don't go past 200 meters a second below 10,000 meters, blah. It's not what I'm trying to show here. I'm going up and up and up. Fuel's still there. We're way past what the skipper gave us, and the skipper's a way stronger engine. And we get up to, once it slows down, takes a while to slow down. We get up, still going up. This is what we call float time. And in float time, you can do staging and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very convenient. Just keep in mind you're losing speed during float time. And we get up to... We'll call it 14.6. 14.6 is how high we went with the worst option. It's better in the fact that it has gimbling for larger rockets so you can steer them easier, that sort of thing. But that is our worst option at 14.6. So let's throw on this guy and launch that. I know lots of loading screens today. It's Yicky. Yicky, Yicky, Yicky. It's okay though. We'll get through them. I might talk about things during loading screens. Maybe. Okay, throttle up here. And we're going to launch. Remember, our high point was 14.6 last time. So here we go. Now we have a little bit more thrust, so we're going to accelerate a little bit faster, but our ISP is better. So you, as you notice, it, it's tough to see, but you should see that we are using less fuel. And right here is how much fuel we're using exactly. The higher up we go, the more we're in a vacuum we're in, the more efficient the engine becomes. I believe all the engines are more efficient in a vacuum. I believe. Don't quote me on that. But we got up to 14.6 last time. And we're just going to float up there. In fact, I'm going to time accelerate a little bit just to get us really up there a lot quicker. And we already beat the record. So, more, more thrust, weighs less, and has the same ISP. Same ISP, just weighed a little less. And that weight difference got us up to 15.8. That is a, do the math, um, a 1,200 meter difference. That's pretty significant for really not much of a mass difference. It was only uh, 0.25 tons of difference, and it got us up there pretty good. Okay, so I like them. Well, apparently thrust isn't what we're all looking for. We're looking for ISP. ISP and low weight seems to be doing miracles. Okay, so let's look at these radio mounts. ISP at sea level 290, and they weigh 0.9 tons each. Not a good option. We were at 320 here, that's down to 290. Those are not efficient. The only convenient thing is they're side mounted and they look cool, blah, whatever. So, we have these uh, nice poodle engines. I call these poodle engines, but they're actually just really short, nubby engines. So, the smallest one gives us a max power of 20. Not enough. Can't use it for this payload. Simple as that. Not enough thrust. Blah. Can't use it. Max power of this one is 50. We can definitely use it, but the ISP is 300. So, that's out of question. This one's even lower, 270. Just doesn't work out the way you want it to. Okay, so we look at this, definitely not enough power. No way. We could stack a bunch of these, but we're looking at an ISP of 220 for each one. Not going to cut it for us. Let's look at this guy. 
Max power of 20, ISP of 250. Very inefficient, like I said, these things are for maneuverability, that sort of thing. High thrust with small weight, I mean that thing only weighs 0 .09 tons. So, we gotta look at our final option. Well, not our final option, we still have that one. But let's look at this one. Thrust of 175 and an ISP of 388. That is probably our best option down here in the atmosphere. Let's just see how good this aerospike could possibly be. You're looking at it going, well, it's just a needle or a cone shape that's pushing the thrust out. How good could that possibly be compared to a big bell cone and everything like that? Well, the nice thing about this needle shape is it restricts and speeds up our exhaust gases in real life. It doesn't really do that in KSP. They just tacked on more ISP for us. So we're at 388 now. I forgot to look at the weight of the actual engine itself, but we're not really looking at that right now. We have plenty of thrust out of it, and look how little fuel we we're using. Oops. My bad. Forgot to turn on uh, SAS. And I hit the A key. On accident. Now, on our last rocket, at full throttle, we started out using about 6 fuel, and it got down to about 4.9 before we uh, ran out of fuel. So I turned everything on. And we go. Alright. Now if you look at this, we're only using 4. 4.13. Now, what's weird about the Aerospike is it doesn't really drop below 4.13 like the other engines did. And it's just going to stay at 4.13. We do have to manage our heat with this engine. Okay, now we're down to 4.12 as we get higher. But... Overall, we're not using nearly as much fuel per second. We're still getting the thrust needed to move our payload. And we're getting up there. I mean, we're at 11,000 and still burning. We are still using fuel. We just beat our last record of 15.8. And we're still going up at an amazing rate. So... I'm actually going to time warp because we're actually going up so fast and so high that the atmosphere is thin enough here where our slowdown is going to be even less than normal. And look at that. We've almost doubled our maximum height. 39. Okay, so Aerospike, clear-cut choice, best way to get out of the atmosphere. These tests were just for in-atmosphere. Keep that in extreme mind. This was all in atmosphere. Now, with all that knowledge, it should be a no-brainer at this point that ISP is good. Higher ISP equals better. So, we look at the atomic rocket motor. Engine max power is 60. Weighs 2.25. So, me doing the math in my head real quick, that leaves us with about 40 max power for our payload. More than enough. Sea level ISP is 220. Blah. In a vacuum, though, it's 800. Now, let's look and try and find 800 in the ISP on anything else here. We got 300, 350, 280, 330. 320, 370, 320, 370, 370, 370, 370, 370, meh, pretty much equal in space and in atmosphere. But if you look at this guy, down here on the ground, pathetic. Blah. Can't do anything. But in a vacuum, holy crap, it is never going to run out of fuel. That's, it's not twice as efficient as the other rockets. Remember, it's not a linear scale. ISP is more of an exponential scale slightly. It does a slight curve. 
So we're looking at probably four to five times more efficient. So, just to prove that, <coughs> excuse me, I am going to launch this with infinite fuel on, get it up into space with time warp and blah 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 blah. Okay, time warp, good. Alright, max throttle, and it actually has enough thrust for our small payload, normally it wouldn't. Turn on infinite fuel, good deal, and go. As you can see, it just barely has enough. And we're going to just go up like that. Got to watch the overheating. It shouldn't overheat. We don't have that much of a payload, and we're not stressing it that much. I'm at times four now, just to get us into space faster. And I definitely don't want to worry about the 200 meter per second mark with this engine. And on the other engines, they were using four at best, 4.13, 4.12 with the aero spike per second of liquid fuel. <coughs> Excuse me again. Now, we're bringing this up to space just to see what we're going to get as far as efficiency goes on the liquid fuel in a vacuum. We did all the tests here in the atmosphere because all the engines don't really have much of a difference between vacuum and space. It's maybe 60 ISP at most. 60 ISP is a big deal, but it's not really enough to really get in your mind and how efficient some of these rockets are. And I forgot to do my gravity turn. Bad me. Bad. Okay, start our gravity turn. We want to keep the yellow above the brown, which is not easy. Since it's barely enough thrust for us to look at that, we're going sideways. Which is what we want. We want to go sideways to get into an orbit and everything. But, you know. You know how it all works. At least, all of you should know how it works at this point if you watch all my videos. So, we're getting lateral velocity and upward velocity. Blah, 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 blah. That is the problem with the nuclear rocket. It doesn't have a lot of thrust, so you don't really want to use it until you're already in a stable orbit using other things like aero spikes or mainsails if your payload is big enough. That sort of thing. But... It is great once you are in an orbit for amazing maneuvers. This is why I use the nuclears for all my videos on where I went to uh, other planets and that sort of thing. Just so I didn't have to worry about fuel much at all, if ever. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it right about there. Okay. Settle down. Throttle up now. get us into an orbit, that way I can show you the uh, fuel amount and how long it stays up here. I'm just playing with the apolapses right now, just making sure we're staying in space. The nuclear rocket, since it's low thrust, it is kind of finicky to get into orbit with it. That's why I'm saying use a different rocket to get into orbit, but once you're in space, try to use the nuclears. Nuclear is your friend. For multiple reasons, but the main reason being that it's super, super efficient. Like, you cannot beat efficiency on this. Let's turn off infinite fuel. We're just going to burn and prograde now, and let's see how much fuel per second we're going to use. 0.69. Not 4.13, not 5, not 6. I think the Rocco Max uses up to 12 or something like that per second per engine. No, 0.69. In fact, I'm going to have to time warp times 4 to be able to drain this engine. And we're going to see just how far we can leave, like how far out our orbit goes around the sun with just this one little tiny tank, little tiny, tiny tank, and just going fast. I mean, there's nothing special going on here. 
It's just that we're using so little fuel, and we're already in space and everything like that, so it's 100% acceleration at this point. We're not fighting gravity or anything like that. We're just adding delta V. And I've, I, I can't get over how efficient this thing is. There is one more that's <coughs> more efficient. <coughs> Excuse me. There is one more that is more efficient than this. But that's the xenon thing, and the thrust is so little, it's only good for small probes, and you have to power it with mass amounts of electricity. Okay. Now, with the nuclear engine and everything like that, burning only 0.69 fuel a second, we were already in an orbit, so we weren't fighting atmosphere or anything like that. We already know it sucks in the atmosphere. It's only 220 in the atmosphere. But, we definitely escaped Kerbin. I mean, we don't even have a curve from Kerbin's gravity pulling us anywhere. Definitely left, and we actually left the solar system with this. Now, you would launch this up with other... Uh, staging and stuff like that. And if you got nose cone, battery, octo, SAS control, medium tank, and a nuclear engine as your very final last stage, you leave the solar system. We are gone. We are out of here. Like, we are going so fast, we will never, ever return back to the sun. We have completely left the grab gravitational forces. We're gone. Out of there. Vamos. We just passed Duna. We're about to pass Drez. I mean, the nuclear engine is so efficient that you can literally get anywhere in the solar system with 180 liquid fuel on a small craft. The bigger, If you have a larger craft, that sort of thing, yes, you gotta add more fuel for it, that sort of thing. Blah. But there is no more, nothing more efficient than this. If su such a thing existed in real life, NASA would be able to go to Alpha Centauri in probably 20 years if they left right now and strapped on a nuclear engine. The problem is, such a thing does exist. It's just that nobody wants to use it because you're throwing hydrogen at a really hot nuclear reactor and said nuclear reactor really doesn't have a way to cool down other than liquid hydrogen blasting across in hydrogen and oxygen combining over a already hot nuclear reactor creates more heat and yeah people don't want to mess with that kind of thing and we're going to pass right by elu even well under elu because Elo is a douchebag, and yeah. Where's Elo? Can we spot him? He was up in that way. No, I don't see him. No. Oh, well, actually, he's up and to the right. Nope, I don't see Elo. Oh well, but yeah. If NASA had technology anywhere near this capability, we'd be a spacefaring race already. <coughs> Excuse me again. This rocket is just so efficient, it's ridiculous. I mean, we're gone. We're still going damn near 6,000 meters a second, and mostly a vertical climb away from the sun. We're curving a little bit, but if you look at the orbit map, we are not returning, ever. We're going to go out there, meet the Kraken, and explode. It's as simple as that. We've already passed Elu. So, that is ISP. That is why I love nuclear engines. That is thrust-to-weight ratio. As long as your thrust is enough to lift your payload, find the maximum ISP for where you are. In space, try to use a nuclear. Nuclears are heavy. They're 2.25 tons. So, they, they're heavier than other rocket uh, bleh, rocket thrusters, but it's ISP more than makes up for all of that. 
The only issue is, is since it weighs more like that, it's going to be harder to get it into orbit than, say, using radial Rocco Maxes and that sort of thing. So, next time, um, I'm next time I'm not busy. I'm of course going to make another video. What that video is going to be, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet. But I think it might be um, litho braking and or gravity assisted uh, departures and that sort of thing. We will see. I'm not 100% sure yet. And until then, you guys have been great. Um, if you ever want to talk to me, ask me questions or anything like that, I am on the uh, Kerbal Space Program official chat on Steam. Just about for the entirety of my life. So... Catch me there if you have any questions or suggestions or criticism, and um, until then, you guys have been great.